Great job getting the translation function built out within your app. Hopefully you can see how easy it is to add the translation functionality uh, into any Thunkable project. Now that we've completed the first two screens in our app, let's start designing the next, the final two screens. So if you recall, in the original version that I showed you, we had two menu items at the top for adding additional languages and for a history section. Let's um, use this duplicate function, um, like so. Let's add in a languages button, like that. We can drag it all the way up to the top. We, we have nice alignment here with the um, guide along the side. We can change the side, um, size manually, or we also, we haven't looked at these yet, you can change the, the width and the height values uh, based on this block here. So let's just move that over a small bit, keep everything aligned. This is gonna be button languages, like so. And we don't want any text, but we will use a background image or an icon instead for the different um, options here. So let's use an image. This time, another option here for uploading files. So we don't want to use one of our screen backgrounds. We're going to use one of these options instead. So we've got um, light mode and dark mode icons, like so. And we have our translate button and our history button. So let's use the um, light option here. And then let's change that resize mode to contain. You can see it shrinks down and it looks quite nice. And then the final thing that we want to do, I think, is add in the extra screen there, the translation, or the languages screen, rather. Um, so we've seen, okay, how to duplicate components. We've seen how to duplicate and drag and drop components. But did you know that we can also, uh, here, if we select screen translate, we can also duplicate entire screens as well. So that's a, another really quick and easy tip for uh, creating or, or duplicating work. Um, might save you a few seconds. So let's say screen uh, languages, languages like this. Let's change out that background image. Again, we can use our background two in this case. And what do we want? We want um, the label up here. And I think that's that's pretty much all we need. Okay, so we need our title label here. We're gonna make a copy of that, like so. And we're gonna drag that onto our languages screen. And here we're gonna have, um, choose a language, like this. And then the last thing then that we need to do is add one more component, which is the simple list component over here on the left. We drag and drop that in, like this. And we're gonna change a couple of these properties uh, so it's easier to read. We're gonna make the text darker. And then we'll also do the same thing with the um, the background. So let's find the background color, excuse me, up here. Um, let's make that white, but let's change this A value, the alpha value to 60, like that, so it's a little bit see-through. Um, so we can try a few different languages here, add this, there we go. Let's try French. Add. Let's um, choose the other two, Thai and Hindi, like so. And we're going to need to have these display in the application itself. Uh, so uh, very simple to design this screen or design the UI here. We've got a label uh, to show the user what they're doing. And then we have a simple list component here. Um, we can add items to that. And what we want is that anytime they choose a language here, it uh, updates the language that we are translating into. So this would be a good opportunity to introduce variables as well. Essentially what happens with our simple list is that when we click on one of the items here, um, it tells us the item that we clicked on and it also tells us this thing called an index, which is the position of the item in the list. Rather than listening to me talking about it, let's just see what happens. Um, so we can output the uh, item here to the list like this. So clicking on any one of these languages uh, updates our label based on what we've clicked. And we can throw this over here into the trash. Let's see what this index value does as well. So we can drag that, we can drop it in like so. Clicking on the first thing shows the value one. Clicking on the second one, a number two or index two in the list, shows the value two. 
three and four, as you expect for the third and fourth. Uh, so now that we have all of this information, um, what we can do is uh, update the language um, that's been used in the in the app. The best way now to store the language that we're using is by creating something called a variable. Over here in this orange variables drawer, we want the first option here, which says initialize app variable name. Uh, let's rename that as well to something like lang or language. That's good. And give it a starting value of ES. Why are we going to use this value ES? Well, if we go back to our translator, you can see that each one of these languages has its own code. So one of the languages we were thinking about using was Thai. That's TH. Uh, I'd also put in the values uh, HI for Hindi, and we use French as well, which is F or. But anytime you want to customize this, just use. Make sure you're using the language code that's here. How do we change the value of this language? Well, that's quite simple to do as well. We're going to set the language variable. Now that you've created a variable of your own, you'll see new options appear here. You're going to set the value of the language to be um, an item from a list. So in list get number like this. Go to the set of list blocks like here like this, and we've got in list get number one. So what we have here is uh, A and B. So our first language was Spanish, which is ES. Our second language was French, which is F or. And the issue that you can probably see <clears throat> is that I only have two items in this list. This is probably one of the trickier things that we're going to see today. So you click on the blue gear icon here and it actually allows you to build your own block. So if I want four items, I can uh, add four items here into my list. If I want three, I can take one out, but it's very easy to add additional items to our list like so. Here in the text um, field, we're gonna choose the first option here. Uh, Thai, I think was second, and then we can also make copies of our blocks. A nice time saver for you there. And the number that we're going to use, rather than using the, um, the, the number one in this case, which would always give us uh, ES, because we just learned about indexes, we're going to use the index here, like this. And uh, what we're going to do for testing is just have a quick look at the value that's stored in the language variable. So quite a lot to uh, think about there, quite a lot to process, but let's test it out and see what happens. So now, rather than saying the word Spanish, we'll now see the code ES. Similarly for French, Thai and Hindi, we see the codes that correspond. The last thing then that we're going to do is navigate back to our translate screen once we've chosen uh, a new language. And we have to make one small change here because we're no longer using the, the value Spanish for all of our translations we're actually going to use our variable called language. That's going to change from translation to translation. I actually realize we're missing one other thing as well. We need to, uh, when the languages button is clicked, we need to be able to link them over to the languages screen like this. Now we can test everything out just like we've done already in our browser. We can uh, click on the new button that we've created. We can choose a different, uh, a different language we can go hello world like this, and we can see the translation appears in our label. Let's choose a different language. Um, we might want to clear out this label as well. So, hello world, let's translate that. And what you can do now, of course, is add in your own languages, add in your own codes, and um, to do that, you just need to add the following 17 blocks. Best look at it and come back for the uh, final screen, which is all about databases.